So welcome everyone to the Cherry Creek Schools HBCU Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. Again, thank you all for joining us. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. So the first is you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. The second, your camera and microphone are off. So the panelists, you or myself, we can't see nor hear you. Um, next, this is just one of many college fairs that we're hosting. Um, so feel free to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this session is gonna be recorded. So in about a week or so, you'll have access to it and you can access this recording at the same place in which you registered. With that said, we're gonna go ahead and kick it off um, with our representative from Howard University. And Unique, we're unable to hear you. So we'll give Unique some time to uh, and come back. Um, so up next, let's go ahead and go with Lincoln University. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mr. Corey Hammond. Um, I'm currently a admission specialist here at Lincoln University of Pennsylvania. Um, I'll be covering for Ms. Bria Spruill, who will be the actual admissions counselor for your area. So thank you again for coming to this information session. I'll be glad to say more about Lincoln University. So Lincoln University is located in Southern Sussex County, Pennsylvania. So it's about 45 minutes from the Philadelphia area, if you're familiar with it. Um, about 30 minutes from Wilmington, Delaware about an hour and a half from Baltimore, Maryland, and about two hours from New York, New York. So real quick, um, Lincoln University was originally established as the Ashman Institute. Um, then the name changed within 1854 to Lincoln University of Pennsylvania. And it's the first degree grant historical black college. So our mission at Lincoln, essentially we're here to educate and empower students to lead their communities engage and change the world, right? So we do it with the three L's, which is learn, liberate, and lead. So learning is providing a rigorous liberal arts education. Um, Lincoln University emphasizes on liberal arts, understanding what you can do inside the class, outside the class, and ways you can learn. Um, liberate, integrate academic and co-curricular programs. So we do offer you know, methods for you to learn in the classroom, outside, whether it's joining an organization. Um, every major we offer has a club and or organization that coincides with it. So that way you could place those, um, you know, the knowledge you're applying in class, outside of class as well. Lead, we offer plenty of opportunities for students to step up, engage and learn how to actually, you know, lead whether it's in a small group organization, um, taking student leadership board positions as far as like ASAP. So here at Lincoln University, we offer admissions student ambassador program. Um, and those are leaders as well on campus that we, you know, uh, help within Lincoln University. So a few quick facts about Lincoln University. So we're not really a big university at all. Our student to faculty ratio is about 15 to one. So you will get to have that one-to-one -on -one, um, connection with your professor. Um, when I went to Lincoln University, every professor knew me. Um, it's kind of funny. I honestly still run into my professors now and they're like, hey, Corey, and it's like, I had you freshman year. Um, we're also, we were also ranked in the top 20 HBCUs in the US World News and Report. Uh, we are represented in 28 different states and 11 countries are represented here at Lincoln University. So we also try to, you know, bring students in from anywhere. I actually help with international students as well. So, you know, I process international documents with students who are from anywhere, whether it's, you know, um, Haiti, all the way to South Africa. So we offer 30 plus undergraduate programs with 18 different minors. So you're able to pretty much create your own major. Um, if you find something that you want to do at Lincoln University, you like the school, but it's, you know, you can't find exactly what you want to do. We do offer academic advisors who are available 24 seven, even remotely, right? Um, academic support services. So, you know, tutoring, writing centers, uh, math learning center and reading centers. So myself, I was a STEM major. I was always in my tutor session. Um, I ended up becoming a tutor my senior year. 
So as far as our majors here are 30, all 36 of our majors, any major that we have that has an asterisk in it can also be a minor. So let's say you don't wanna have you know, human services as a major, you can all pick it up as a minor in coordination with a mass comm major. So a little bit about student success at Lincoln University, we do offer internship services. So, you know, understanding that we want you to graduate with experience in your field or graduate with understanding what you might want to do or might not want to do post-graduation. You know, undergraduate research, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of fields, oftentimes you, they might want you to have some type of research experience under your belt. We offer ample opportunities for students to actually conduct research, whether it's, you know, in their own personal time um, with a professor and professors honestly love when you, conduct research with them. They love hiring research assistants, especially students. Uh, we do offer counseling services. So even at a time like this, we still offer counseling services. So students are available, are able to, you know, um, set up remote services with the counseling center. So they're able to book an appointment and the counseling center is there 24 seven. And that also goes for faculty and staff. Community service, a lot of organizations on campus require community service, right? We offer, we need you to have community service to even participate in some organizations whether it's, you know, on your own time, you need to do it just to, for, um, I'm sorry, so chat popped up. Okay. Um, you know, for community service, you offer it, whether it's you need it for organization or your own time. And in national programs, you offer ample opportunities as well for students to study abroad. So a little bit about student life. So we do have 70 plus student organizations here at Link University. Um, like I said, for almost every major, there's an organization involved with it. We are able to take what you learn out in the class and apply outside of class and even make connections with the, that major. So for example, anyone in accounting, we offer NABA, National Associate of Black Accountants, um, you know, NCNW, we also offer Greek life. So we have the full divine nine, social fellowships, band fraternity sororities, and the music sorority as well. Um, so we also offer RGC at Lincoln University too. Um, pretty much it gives you an opportunity to by the time you graduate to become a first lieutenant. So a little bit about our athletics. We are a division two school in the CIAA. Um, so pretty much every, every sport that we have listed for, for men's sports is football, basketball, cheerleading, cross country, track and field. All of them are competitive except for cheerleading. For women's sports, we do offer soccer, basketball, softball, volleyball, cheerleading, cross country, and track and field. Again, they all are competitive except cheerleading. So, you know, everybody wants to know about the money portion of it, right? Where do I fit in right now with the money? So, you know, as of right now, the estimated cost of attendance for in-state students is about $22,664, um, $46. And out-of-state students is about $28,849. Now, a plot twist to that is if you are a student veteran um, or you're the dependent of a student veteran, you will pay this in-state tuition price automatically with support and documents provided. So about 35% so about of our scholarships awarded to students is performance scholarships. So that would be, you know, athletics, marching band, concert choir, um, we offer 30% of our students receive merit-based scholarships. So that is the President's Scholarship, um, the Provost, Deans, and Alliance Transfer Scholarship. We do offer need-based scholarships as well, which is up 35% of our scholarship award as well. So a little bit more about our scholarships. Um, so for freshmen and coming students, we do offer freshman merit-based scholarships, right? So it's broken down into three categories which is presidential, provost, and dean. The amount varies based on your academic standing when applying to Lincoln University, but our minimum GPA is a 3.3. Um, academic level, you just have to be a freshman applying, and the deadline is February 1st. Our L3 scholarship, uh, it varies from $5,000, $8,000, 3.0 GPA, and you have to be in a freshman status. So one, Interesting fact, we do offer at Lincoln University is tuition free. So 60% of our students um, receive about tuition free. So essentially you're locked in for that price. So as we know, um, universities tend to increase their price every year. Um, whether it's a small amount, a huge amount here at Lincoln University, all students are qualified for tuition freeze. 
So real quick, how to apply Link University, you submit our free application, and then all you have to do is submit your documents. So that's your high school transcript, ACT or SAT scores. Now, due to a time like this, we do offer our LIFT program, which is Lions Ignited for Triumph program. So if you weren't able to take your ACT or SAT, we do provide you with four questions that you just need to answer, um, you know, thoroughly, and then we'll evaluate that from there. So I don't think we have time for the actual full video for our take a tour. Now it's, you know, the question and portion. Okay, so the Thank first- Thank you. Oh. oh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I only have one question. So is there job placement for graduates? Um, so we do offer a uh, campus service. So you actually have access to it after graduation. So if you have a hard time finding a job post-graduation, you are able to come back to Lincoln University as long as you provide, show that you're a student, um, you will be assisted with opportunity to find a job, whether it's a job, internship, whatever the case may be. All right, thank you, Lincoln University, for your presentation. Up next, we have Norfolk State University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Dominique Garcia. I currently serve as one of the admission counselors, recruitment specialists at Norfolk State University. I'm also an alumni of the institution, graduating class of 2014 with my degree in mass communication, concentration in general broadcasting. I'm a current graduate study student at the institution, majoring in mass communications. However, my focus is now on public relations. Now, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we're unable to be with you all in person, but it doesn't stop us from giving you a great view of Sparta. NSU is located in Norfolk, Virginia, which is actually one of your largest cities in the Commonwealth of Virginia, better known as the Hampton Roads area. We make up the 757, which is the seven cities in the Hampton Roads area. Now we are located right in the heart of the downtown area, roughly about three minutes away from Waterside District, where you can enjoy any of the food spots around the local area. We also do hold the largest naval base in the world, as well as NSU was the first city was, excuse me, was the first university in the city to invest with the city to, for a light rail with two stops of location on our campus. But we came here to learn more about NSU. We were founded September 18, 1935, which means we have just celebrated our 85th birthday. Also, nice little fun fact. NSU is your only predominant Black institution of higher education founded in the mix of the Great Depression. So one thing we do tell our Spartans is that they are built to survive, succeed, and adapt to all changes at our campus. Offering out over 30 undergraduate majors, over 15 master's and doctorate programs, over 100 different clubs, we sit on a gorgeous 134-acre campus. And prior to COVID life, our faculty to student ratio was 1 to 18. Now, in our enrollment size will be more of a medium-sized school um, if you're going to compare us against all schools in the nation. But if you're going to compare us amongst HBCUs, now we can get a little bit larger. We're actually your largest populated HBCU in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Offering off five wonderful schools and colleges, School of Education, School of Business, School of Social Work, College of Liberal Arts, and College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. We do consider ourselves to be more of a modern HBCU as we did make the decision in 2019 that not only were we, were we going to begin renovations on our campus, but we were going to begin building new buildings on our campus. See, in COVID-19, NSU did a lot of great things. We not only jumped five stops to becoming your top 20 best HBCUs to attend, but additional to that, we actually are the first HBCU to sign a deal with Netflix, offering out a 14-week tech boot camp to over 140 students, as well as recent graduates. Additional to that, in our um, three-story eco-friendly solar power library, you will see sound and closed study rooms as we do want to make sure that our Spartans are well taken care of, as we do recognize that one thing we all as human beings learn differently. Your student, your student service building will be more of your resource building at our institution, offering out access to Office of Admissions, which is my office, um, mail room, Spartan card office, financial aid, a bowling alley is also located in that building, Spartan card office, dean of students, career services, all the great um, resources for our Spartans. Majority of our students do stay on campus, offering out 10 residential communities. The only freshmen who will be offered out co-ed options will be either um, Denimus, presidential, provost, or honors college students. Now, as we tell all of our Spartans, it takes a village. It is not just about the Office of Admissions. It's not just about the Student Success Center, which is academic advising for the freshman or sophomore class, or the, um, the departments, excuse me. 
And you'll definitely want to build your village with either career services that have mock interviews, job placements, career placements, internship placements, as well as just for success. You'll have your living and learning communities, men and women initiative, as well as counseling on campus. You have Oasis that caters out to any students with disabilities or international. You have free, um, free uh, tutoring services, sound and closed study rooms, free computer labs, and writing center lab. Now, we do tell our Spartans to get involved at our institution, as we do not let you guys be just a stale piece of toast, which means you just go from your residential hall over to your academic buildings. No, definitely get involved. We offer out many sororities and fraternities. Yes, we do have the full Divine Nine, but if you don't see a club on campus, then have no fear. It takes 10 students and one academic advisor. Now, additional to that, we cannot speak about NSU or any HBC without highlighting our bands. Yes, band is a very big thing for us. And see, I'll always highlight our Grammy award-winning Spartan Legion band. Why? They're actually the reason why I chose Norfolk State University. No, I've never cared to be in the band. No, I've never played an instrument. No, nothing. Definitely in my head I have, though. But no, I love the family aspect that the Spartans brought. So when I saw it, I was like, hold on, Spartan Legion, I'm loving it. So that is actually why I committed to NSU. And then additional to that, we are a D1 school in the, um, located in the MIAC conference. If interested in any of our athletic sports, please do go ahead to our athletics page contacting the um, specific recruiter. Now, if it don't make dollars, don't make sense. Get into the full cost of tuition at NSU. We are a state institution, which means we do offer out two fees, out-of-state fees set at $32,514. However, it does not stop our students from getting great financial opportunities. If you are a senior as of October the 1st, 2020, we hope to be one of the 10 schools on your FAFSA. Now, it does not mean you're committing to us. It just means you're interested in us. So letting us know we're interested in you too. When we admit you, then we look to award you, which means you get the money at that time. Offering our provost presidential with minimum GPA 3.0, SAT 1080, ACT 21. Yes, NSU has made the decision to go test optional. Any of our students who have a 3.0 or above, we are highly encouraging you to submit an essay for your score replacement. Why? Because then that will get you in the running for any of our scholarships at our university. Now we do approach our admission process with a holistic approach, which means we judge out everything, which means I'm going to need test score, transcripts, um, I'm going to need your essay. I'm going to need two letters of recommendation. Anything that you want to add to why you are an ideal Spartan and why should you get some scholarship money from us. Now, our application is right online. Go to nsu.edu slash behold, filling out a one-page application, uploading all documents to you um, onto the uh, portal, excuse me. Now, my name is Miss Dominique Garcia. I will serve as your primary admissions counselor. If looking to get a one-on-one -on -one session, please do contact me and we will go ahead and set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. Now, thank you guys so much for having us. Be blessed, be beautiful. And then in the Spartan culture, we say, behold the green and gold. Thank you, Norfolk State University. Up next, we have Tuskegee University. Oh, I'm on mute. The famous... So I need to share my screen now. Is that right? So now I got to figure out how to do this. I, oh, there it goes. All right. And the screen that I'm sharing is this one. And do you see the famous Booker T. Washington there? I assume that would be a yes. So we are the, um, the, the Tuskegee University. And I, my name is Deidre. I'm Walker. I'm a 1985 graduate of Tuskegee University. However, I do have a recent um, 2016 graduate of Tuskegee University. So I can represent both perspective of being an alumni as well as a, as well as a recent um, mother. So um, we, we do focus on um, teaching, leadership, and service. And that means that when you come out of the university, you are a teacher. You go out into the world, you are constantly expected to um, provide what you know, take in what you don't know, um, leadership and ongoing service. And that is the mantra of what Booker T. Washington stood for when, as our first principal of the university. At Tuskegee University, um, the central purpose again is to develop leadership, knowledge, and service through its undergraduate and graduate and professional programs. We have ongoing research and 
out and outreach programs on on the campus as well. You may see conferences at any time. Um, we we are constantly receiving many um, um, grants from foundations and corporate um, partners to keep our students abreast of the latest technologies and the latest um, research that may be out there, no matter what field you may be in. And through um, these programs, um, the programs that you would be matriculate through the university, um, we are, you, as an alumni, we are expected to be of service and to be ongoing lifetime learners. The picture that you see here is a statue on the campus and it represents Booker T. Washington lifting the veil of ignorance. So as Tuskegee, as a student, as a incoming student and then outcoming alumni, you, we continue to lift the veil of ignorance. Um, Tuskegee University, we are the number one producer of aerospace um, engineers. We, um, on campus, we have a fully um, accredited um, aerospace program. And we do have engineers, um, aerospace engineers that are um, rocketing into space as we speak right now. Who are we? We are located um, just two hours from Atlanta. It is located in Tuskegee, Alabama. And we are the pride of the swift growing South. We were founded in 1980, I mean, 1881, July 4th. And as I have said, our founder and, and um, first pr uh, principal was um, Dr. Booker T. Washington. And he remains a staple in our, um, in our academia throughout the day. So you do not leave the university unless you recognize who um, the famed Dr. Booker T. Washington is. Additional marks in our history, um, as we are a, um, as you would think, we have been, we were founded in 1881. So it makes sense that the university would have made many marks throughout the, the world. So we are one of the first centers to be founded um, by NASA to um, develop technology in food science um, during human space missions. We're the home of the first HBCU band, the famous Crimson Piper. Um, going on, we are a national um, historic site by the United States Congress. We are the only university holding that. So when you come on our campus, you see many, many of our buildings that historic buildings that are maintained by the National Historic Site. And um, we are the first HBCU with a um, veterinarian med veterinary medicine program. And let's see, going on, we are the African, um, we produce more African American general officers in the military than any other institution. We have all of the milit um, all of the programs on our campus that spans from the Air Force, of course, the, Na um, the Navy, we also have the, the Army, and then some of the other ones, the Marines and, the, and um, the Army Corps are some of the other ones, I know sidebar that, that we also have. So if you're interested in going into the military, know that you would be following the, um, the hallmark of, of many others. Um, I'm gonna keep going, quick facts here. Um, we have a student ratio of 10 to one, there are programs, um, bachelors, 41, you can read that for, for yourself. Um, admissions requirements, um, we hold a, um, our minimum um, GPA is a 3.1. First time freshman, um, there is a $25 non-refundable um, um, deposit on, on the, our fee, I should say, on that. And, um, so you can read that. Um, deadlines for applications. 
would be May 1st is the deadline for summer for the summer term for the fall term July 1 um, spring term would be November 1st and of course yes and th thank you Deidre um, for, for your presentation um, we do have uh, another presenter up next so up next uh, we are going to go ahead and move to our fraternities and sororities was that six minutes already yes ma'am Oh my goodness, sorry. Okay, well, and we can send this out, right? You're gonna send yes. this out to them? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, it's very different being remote. So up next, we'll have our fraternities and sororities. Good evening, my name is Dwana Harvell and I am a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I became a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority on the campus of Clark Atlanta University in 1995. Delta Sigma Theta sorority was founded January 13, 1913 by 22 collegiate women with a vision for a sisterhood, scholarship and service. Ironically, one of our founders actually grew up right here in Colorado in Montrose and then later went on to attend Howard University where she became one of the 22 women that founded Delta Sigma Theta. Delta Sigma Theta was founded on Christian principles and we have over a thousand chapters worldwide, including Japan, the Virgin Islands, Bermuda, and here locally in the Denver metro area where we have over 200 members. In regards to our mission, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is an organization of college educated women committed to the constructive development of its members and to public service with a primary focus on the black community. The major programs of the sorority are based on the organization's five point program thrust, economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. Our sorority also offers a scholarship for uh, students that will be graduating from high school. Unfortunately, the deadline for this year has passed, um, but for those of you who may be eligible next year, please be on the lookout. The eligibility criteria include African-American female, a resident of the Denver Metro area, a high school graduate, graduating senior from high school, or a person who has earned their GED and applying to an accredited two-year college, four-year college, or technical school. For more information, visit denverdeltas.org backslash programs backslash scholarships. To learn more about our organization, you can research the book In Search of Sisterhood, or visit www.deltasigmatheta.org. Thank you. Thank you, Delta Sigma Theta. Up next, we have Zeta Phi Beta. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cassandra Robinson Ray. Everyone calls me Sandy. I became a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated in November of 1993 on the campus of Knoxville College in Knoxville, Tennessee. And I'm currently a member of Gamma Alpha Theta Zeta chapter in the Aurora, Colorado area. I chose Zeta based on our principles of scholarship, service, sisterhood, and finer womanhood. Our sorority was founded January 16, 1920 on the campus of Howard University. And globally, we have over, over 100,000 members. Um, I want to go through our notable first. We were the first sorority to charter a chapter in Africa. We were first to form auxiliary groups, which are our youth groups. 
We were the first sorority to be constitutionally bound to a fraternity, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. And our most recent first was we were the first black sorority to appear in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, some of our national initiatives are a ZHO program, which is an interactive, holistic, multidimensional outreach program. And it's designed to enhance, cultivate, and empower participants to develop health promoting lifestyle choices across the lifespan. And we target women, youth, seniors, men, and international women of color. We also have an elder care initiative and a partnership with the March of Dimes focusing on maturity awareness. Um, we also adopt schools uh, that could be anything from being hands-on to give out school supplies. We have coat and glove drives. We help out during school activities and tutoring programs. And here in the state of Colorado, we have three active graduate chapters, one in Denver, Aurora, and one in Colorado Springs. And we have two undergraduate chapters. Those chapters are located at the University of Northern Colorado in Greeley and Colorado State University in Fort Collins, Colorado. And if you would like any additional information about our organization, please visit our national website at www.zphib1920.org. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Omega Sci-Fi. Good evening, my name is Kendall Gregory McGee. I was initiated into Omega Sci-Fi on April 13, 2019, Chi-Fi chapter in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I am actually a legacy. My father is also a member of Omega Sci-Fi initiated Chi-Fi chapter in 1990. Um, Omega Sci-Fi was founded by three undergraduates and one graduate advisor on the campus of Howard University on November 17, 1911. Omega Sci-Fi is the first Black Greek organization to be founded on an HBCU campus. As you look throughout history, one of the things that you will find is an Omega man standing somewhere near change. Um, in terms of the arts, some of our famous members would include Count Basie, Langston Hughes, we have comedians Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, um, author and poet Sterling Brown. Athletics, I'm sure a majority of you know who Michael Jordan is, Shaquille O'Neal, but one of uh, our most famous members is D. Hart Hubbard. He was actually the first African-American to represent the United States in the Olympics in 1924. Um, in terms of business and civil rights, there are a list of uh, members that have made significant contributions. We actually just lost a giant in Vernon Jordan. Um, as an activist, he was one of Bill Clinton's advisors. Um, one of the things that makes Omega stand out from other fraternities specifically is our emphasis around friendship. Our motto is friendship is essential to the soul. And although we focus on giving back to our community and focus on what can we do to uplift the community, that is our fourth cardinal principle. So our four cardinals are manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. Friendship is really what sets us apart. As an Omega, anywhere you go, you will have a friend. You can always tell who an Omega man is. We stand out and we look for each other and we support each other. If you have any questions about Omega Sci-Fi, you can go to the website www.oppf.org and there is a, a place for you to be able to submit any questions that you have. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Virginia State University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chanel Stafford. I'm an admissions counselor here at Virginia State University. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So Virginia State University, we are the first public state-supported historically black college in the United States. Here's a picture of our beautiful campus. We sit on about 236 acres in Petersburg, Virginia. So that's central Virginia. We're about 20, 25 minutes south of Richmond, the state capital. We're also about two hours south of Washington, DC, the nation's capital. 
because of time, I'm going to skip the video I would normally show, but let's get down to business. We have six colleges with over 35 majors. They are the College of Agriculture, which includes a 400 acre farm right down the street from campus. We have the Reginald F. Lewis College of Business, which was recently awarded Best HBCU Business Program. It's also named after an alum of Virginia State, and he's the first African American to have a billion dollar business. So we definitely know what we're doing here in terms of business. We have the College of Education, College of Engineering and Technology, which includes computer science as a major, and Virginia State is responsible for producing more African American computer scientists than any other institution in the United States. Uh, we also have the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, as well as Natural and Health Sciences. So whichever degree you decide to pursue, we allow students to double major. There's no restrictions with that. You can also minor in any of the majors as well. And we also offer several pre-professional programs, such as pre-law, pre-med, pre-vet, and pre-pharmacy. So at Virginia State, we have about 4,300 students enrolled, not super huge, but not teeny tiny either. Our average class size is 20, which is probably smaller than your class sizes are now. And our student faculty ratio is 13 to one. So basically what all these numbers mean is that we have small class sizes and you get that individual attention that you deserve. So I was just discussing academics and hopefully that's why you're coming to school to learn. However, it's not just about that. You wanna have a good time while you're there as well. It's all about balance. So we have 17 NCAA Division II sports teams and we're part of the CIAA conference. In particular, our men's basketball and football teams have both won the championship recently, and our women's volleyball team was projected to win the championship last year as well. So really great in athletics. We also have over 90 clubs and organizations on campus. They include student government, campus ministry, fashion, sports, Greek life, whatever you're into, we probably have that club or organization. And if not, then that's your opportunity to start it. We're also really huge with our study abroad programs. We've been places before such as South Africa, Ghana, China, Belize, France. Unfortunately, right now due to COVID, we're not traveling, but hopefully we can reinstate those programs soon because studying abroad is a great way to have a multicultural experience while still at an HBCU. So I know you heard this information, you're super excited and you wanna know, what do I need to do to apply? I am so glad that you asked. It is very simple. All we need from you is an application submitted online. Our application is free. It's always free, no waiver or anything required. After that, we need your transcript and test scores if you have them. Now we are test optional, and not just for this year, but for eternity. So you don't need to submit uh, test scores, but if you do have them, please send them in anyways. And last year's admitted class average was a 2.9 GPA, 930 on the SAT and an 18 on the ACT. So scholarships, um, I'm not gonna read it out to you because I'm sure you can read along and I also be, uh, I wanna be cognizant of our time here this evening, but uh, those scholarships are renewable. So as long as you maintain a 3.0 uh, for both of them, you receive that money each year that you're in school. So um, also these dorms on this slide are our quad dorms. They're the nicest newest ones on campus. Generally only upperclassmen live here, but if you receive one of these scholarships as a freshman, you can live here as well. So you will literally be where the money resides. And speaking of money, out-of-state tuition is about $21,000. That is just tuition, that does not include room and board. Room and board is going to vary upon which dorm you're in, which meal plan you select. We averaged out to be about $11,000 though. So altogether, as an out-of-state student, you're looking at about $32,000 your first year at Virginia State. But I'm sure that all of you guys are scholars. You're gonna get one of those scholarships and bring that cost right on down. Just as a note, this building on this slide and in my virtual background is our multi-purpose center, the newest building on campus. It's where our basketball team plays, where we have different events and performances. Last year for homecoming, we had Megan the Stallion. So this is where she was performing and our welcome center is located here too. So hopefully you can come check us out, take a tour of campus and this is where you'll meet. So once again, my name is Chanel Stafford Admissions Counselor here. I can put my contact information in the chat when I'm done. Um, but just to reiterate, our application is free. It's always free. You can find it at bsu.edu slash apply. May 1st is our priority admissions deadline. Um, we do operate on a rolling admissions basis. So the sooner you get us your information, the sooner we can evaluate you. We will be making decisions after that date, but we really want you to have everything in by then. So you can make sure you have housing for the fall, your financial aid is taken care of, all that good stuff. And we are evaluating you for scholarships and we're evaluating you for admission as well. So say you get admitted and then your GPA goes up afterwards or you get updated test scores, make sure you send us your updated information so that we can reevaluate you for those scholarships. And that was a super quick overview, and, but that is all I have for you this evening. Thank you, Virginia State University. Up next, we have Howard University.
Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Unique Cooper, and I am a graduate of Howard University. I'm also a, a principal here in the Cherry Creek School District, and I'm here representing Howard University. I know we don't have a ton of time, so I'm going to go through this quickly. By no means is six minutes enough for any of us to talk about our universities, but I'm excited to have um, you guys um, listening in tonight. I will start by saying that um, as a Howard University graduate, um, I was attracted to Howard because of the legacy, which was um, excellence, Black excellence in every facet of anything I can think of. And so Howard University is um, my home. I used to go back every year. That is not possible right now, but um, I plan to continue when um, the world opens back up and we have ability to um, go back and visit. So this here is just a few of the pictures the Howard. It definitely is um, a top tier um, institution, um, regardless of the HBCU status. Um, and so it has um, an immense amount of growth happening right now at the current moment. And um, it is quite popular, um, mainly due to the individual who is our vice president of the US, which is um, Kamala Harris. And so here, You'll see briefly um, some of the individuals who um, have graduated from Howard and continue to rep Howard in everything you do. And so um, I won't go through all the names, but they're here below. I'm going to go through a quick, a bit, quick um, fast facts with you guys. And I won't read them all, but just highlighting the fact that HPCU, like Howard, is um, a premier university. Um, we have one of the largest populations, if not the largest population and within HBC realm. We are the only tier one research institution um, in, of, in any of the HBCUs. Um, and many of the schools have mentioned Howard in the sense of um, for the divine nine sororities and fraternities were founded at Howard University. And so the, the life of a student is really um, immersed amongst, you know, really understanding um, their roles and how they play into the larger co concept of community within Howard. Um, moving on to um, the colleges and universities, or colleges and that we have, Howard is the only university to have a um, undergraduate program as well as the School of Law, School of Divinity, School of Medicine, also School of um, Dentistry, which is underneath the, the medicine realm. And um, that brings about a lot of pride in Howard as you can go throughout your entire career as long as much as you want um, to receive um, not only undergraduate degree, master's degree, but also PhD and professional programs um, at Howard. I'll move to some of the unique programs that Howard has um, for students. Um, one is um, Howard West, which Howard is the only university within the HBCU realm that has a partnership with Google. Um, and it offers internships based upon students um, in the program. They have expanded that as of late and given more opportunity to students um, to be able to be bi-coastal in that they're spending half of the year or approximately half the year um, at Howard West, which is located in the tech, um, the tech realm in California, as well as in Washington, D.C., where Howard's located. Another one of Howard's pride, points of pride in terms of programs is the ability to um, send students to study abroad programs. I myself um, was in South Africa for a semester um, and had an amazing opportunity. I know Howard really did a great job making sure that the experience from going from HBCU to other universities around the world was um, smooth as possible. Um, Howard being a black, you know, black college back to the university, I chose to have a very opposite um, experience and went to an all white university in South Africa. And so in terms of having that experience of seeing both realms of what it's like to be in a PWI, predominantly white institution, and as well as, as, well as the HBCU, I definitely got that. Howard University also had the ability to have a um, TEDx, which was an incredible event that had um, multiple speakers um, presenting um, with in the realm of blackness. And so it was really an amazing opportunity and um, it was great. Another component that I think is really important is, is 
references the HBU experience within research. And I mentioned before how it's only tier one research institution within HBCUs. And that also includes the Moreland Spring Guard Library, which is the largest collection of um, African-American um, historical documents in the entire world. And so as Howard has proven itself to be a top university, um, we really are in a space to continue to grow. And um, lastly, if you have any questions specifically for me as a point of contact here in, in the um, Denver metro area, my contact is below. Howard typically does not send actual recruiters to um, places beyond the West, um, the, the Midwest, um, much, much of their student population come from the Southern states as well as the East Coast and, and also California as another hub. Um, so I want to thank you guys for your time and I will listen for you guys in the Q&A. Thank you so much, Howard University. And again, thank you to all of our amazing presenters. Um, for your presentation today and for sharing all of that helpful and useful information to all of our attendees. Um, with that said, we are approaching the end of our session today, but I do have a few housekeeping items. So the first housekeeping item is that once you close our session today, there will be a quick survey about four questions. Please respond with your honest and candid feedback. Um, you can also go to our website to sign up for more sessions. And then finally, this recording will be available in about a week or so. Um, so feel free to log in to shrivescan.com slash Cherry Creek. Again, thank you all for your attendance and I hope everyone has a great night.